Watch this candidate from India score an amazing band nine for his performance on the speaking interview. Welcome to the speaking portion of the IELTS exam. I will be your examiner for this part of the test. Mm -hmm. And I will record it for marking purposes. May I see your identification, please? Of course, here you go. Thank you. And uh, what is your full name? My first name is Arav and my family name is Singh. Please just call me Arav. Okay, Arav. Here is your passport back. Thank you. The speaking uh, has three parts. I will give you instructions for each for part one. I will ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. Do you work or study? I'm currently working as an electrical engineer for General Electric and I am also studying for the IELTS to continue my master's in engineering at Toronto University next year. What do you do at the weekends? Well, when I'm not studying, I like taking my wife out to a restaurant and watch a movie. Like last Saturday when we watched a funny comedy. Let's talk about transportation. Do you know how to drive a car? Yes, I do. I've had my driver's license since 18. I really enjoy driving. Mostly I use my car to get to work, shopping and vacations. How often do you ride the bus? Since I have had my driver's license, I rarely take a bus. I mostly use it when my car is unavailable due to repairs or I have lent it out to a friend. Which is your favorite type of transportation? Definitely my car. It's comfortable and convenient, as well as it has air conditioning and I can listen to my music on the studio. Where can you catch the nearest train in your area? Mm, I'll have to think over it. Just give me a moment, please. I think the closest would be Jodhpur, which is uh, roughly 10 kilometers away from my flat. How has public transportation changed in the past 100 years? Oh, uh, that has changed immensely. With the advent of airplanes, modern trains and buses, people can travel greater distances comfortably and quickly. Like last year, I just flew to United States and I was there in 12 hours. When you ride a bicycle, what should you do to stay safe? Whenever I'm riding a bicycle, I should wear a helmet to keep my head safe and also be very careful of the vehicle traffic. That is the end of part one. Now we will continue with part two. For part two, here is a card with some questions. Please mm -hmm. do not turn that over yet. Here's a okay. pencil to take notes. And here is some note paper. You will have one minute to think about your answer. Take some notes if you wish, and then you will have two minutes to speak. I will tell you when to start and when to stop. Are you ready? Yep, I am. Okay, then your one minute preparation time begins now. Go ahead and turn over the card. Okay, Arav, your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. I think one of the busiest days I have ever experienced was last year in September when I started my new job at uh, General Electric. I remember being very nervous because I wanted to make sure that my colleagues, my boss are super satisfied with the first day of work. So I woke up super early at 4 a.m. First did a little bit of uh, meditation, shaved, showered, and then got ready as for the company expectations. For then I later on reviewed all the job parameters that my, my manager shared it with me a week prior. I left for office early just to make sure that I have enough time to greet my colleagues and settle in. The workday was very busy as I had to make sure that I learn new information about the company's procedures and machinery. Finally, after my Job was finished at 6 p.m. I sat down with my manager to go through the day's work and check about my performance. He was very satisfied, so I was very happy. After that, I had to stop by at the grocery store to buy some food for supper. Believe me, I was very exhausted at that time. But when I got home, my wife was waiting for me with surprise. Some friends coming in at home to congratulate to me on my first day of work. We spent few hours chatting, eating, 
finally, the time came around when I had to hit the bed. Uh, although the day was very busy, but I feel great looking back at it and I can look back on it with pride. Okay, all right, your two minutes is up. I have to stop you there. Uh, please pass back the card with the questions, the note paper. Mm -hmm. and the pen. Yes, thank you. And now we will continue with part three. For part three, I will ask you some more questions related to the topic of part two. Uh, let's talk errands. What are common responsibilities that people manage every month in society? Mm -hmm. Well, every individual each month should pay their bills, rent or mortgage, and go to school or work and also clean their house. Why is it important to do these on time? I think it is important to be prompt at these errands because people might easily get into financial trouble if they don't pay their bills and might end up losing their phone service or house. How has technology helped people to complete their social tasks such as banking? Well, it has helped a lot because people have been doing the banking services conveniently from their home online. What are the disadvantages of this? I think people are not as social as they used to be because they don't get out anymore like to visit a bank, talk to a bank teller. Are there any errands that people do these days which did not exist 50 years before? Yes, definitely. People these days pay their internet bills. Like this wasn't available 50 years back or a half a century back, so they didn't need to worry about it. Will there be new regular tasks in the future that we don't have today? Yes, definitely there will be. Like we will have to charge the batteries of the self-driving cars every six months and keep on the um, software updating. Let's talk about productivity. Why is it important for people to be productive during the work week? I think people should do a good job Monday to Friday, just not to earn good money, but also to be proud of what they're doing and their contributions towards the society. What happens when individuals stop being productive? Uh, that's bad. In, in that case, they just depend on the society and eventually they might end, end up being depressed. What can be done to improve productivity and decrease stress? Mm, I think having good food and a little bit of exercise helps in generating more energy and uh, decreasing anxiety and stress. Does this always work? I think yes, it does, because having good food and regular exercise helps in this case. That is the end of part three that concludes the speaking portion of the IELTS exam. You will have your band score in about mm -hmm. two weeks time with the other sections of the test. Uh, make sure Arav to take your passport with you. Have yeah. a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thanks Thank a lot. You. Bye. Bye. So why does this candidate get an amazing perfect band nine for his responses in the speaking interview? Does he speak perfect English? No. Does he speak English without an accent? No. So why is it still a band nine? Well, you must know. A band nine doesn't mean perfect speech or perfect conversation. There's really no such thing. A band nine is described as an expert user of the English language. This is not necessarily a native speaker of English. In fact, many people are surprised when I say that native speakers wouldn't necessarily get a perfect score on the speaking interview. So why does this candidate deserve that band nine? Let me tell you. In order to achieve a band nine, a candidate must have fluent language equal to that of a native speaker. Their pronunciation must be clear enough that every one of their words can be understood by the listener. Importantly, they must answer every question exactly. 
They're giving original answers with good detail and complex grammar. In this case, the candidate satisfies all of these criteria. They're very quick to answer. His answers are very clear. He gives the right amount of detail in part one, two, and three. It's clear to see that this student is very confident using the English language, virtually the same level of confidence as he is with his own native language. Even though he makes a couple of slight mistakes in his grammar, they're not unnatural. Even native speakers don't always use perfect grammar in spoken English. In this case, the slight mistakes that are made in one or two parts are perfectly acceptable for an expert user of English. So now you know, to get a band nine, this is the level of responses that you need to produce on your next speaking exam. Practice and you can get there too.